and I could do basically anything I wanted to. I could bust the company or I could work really hard and understand and learn along the way. And that's what I decided to do. And that gave me the, the tools to actually go ahead and, and start the first thing. Hi, and welcome to the Innovative Mindset Podcast. I'm your host, Isolde Trachtenberg. On the show, you get my conversations with peak performing thought leaders, creatives, and entrepreneurs. Every week, I bring you the latest scoop on what these incredible people do to succeed and how you can get their secrets and do it too. Whether we're talking about best practices for spending time creating, how to work the business part of your business, or how to keep in that innovative mindset so you can keep living and performing, you'll get practical and wise information to use in your work and in your life. And now, let's get on with the show. Hey there, and welcome to the Innovative Mindset Podcast. My name is Isolde Trachtenberg, and I am thrilled that you're here. I'm also thrilled to have today's guest. First of all, I love the food that his restaurant prepares. Let's get that out of the way. But let me tell you a little bit about Guy Vaknin. He's a renowned chef famous for his innovative plant-based creations. He was raised in a big family in Israel, and food was always the focus of their gatherings. He spent a significant amount of time in his grandmother's Moroccan kitchen making food using the freshest vegetables, herbs, and spices. Oh, delightful. After finishing his military duties in the Israeli Defense Force, he moved to the USA and he started school as a computer engineer, but then quickly realized it wasn't right for him. So instead, he enrolled in the Institute of Culinary Education, and after that, he became the executive chef at Esprit Events, an established kosher catering company in Manhattan. So in that role, he met his future wife and co-founder, Tali. Together, they developed their signature vegan sushi, and the Beyond Sushi brand was born. Check this out now. In 2012, Chef Guy was a contestant on Fox's Hell's Kitchen, and in 2018, he appeared on ABC's Shark Tank Season 10, and he won a deal with investors Lori Grenier and Matt Higgins, and we're going to talk a little bit more about how that all played out, too. Chef Guy's vision of creating polychromatic plant-based sushi has evolved into a sustainable brand that offers an extensive and, might I say, delicious menu with global flavors. Welcome, Guy. I'm so glad that you're here. Hey, how are you? Thank you for I'm having me. I'm really well, and I'm so excited that you're here. I, first of all, full disclosure, come to Beyond Sushi for all of my little celebrations. Oh, it's my birthday. We're going to Beyond Sushi. Thank it's my you. anniversary. We're going Thank to Beyond you. Sushi. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm probably that. good, good, good. Yes. Well, the, the um, especially at this time. Absolutely. I know right now it's it's a challenging time for for anybody who is in any kind of a service industry, especially restaurants. Yeah. I the sunny side that's my favorite and so please never remove yes. that from the menu you remove mm. the cinnamon roll and and i, I did i know i know <laughs> I I, did. it was tragic i needed, I needed a gluten-free option uh, i yeah. no, and 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 i love the gluten-free option but the cinnamon roll with the coconut ice cream see you can yeah. tell i'm a, <laughs> I'm a huge fan <laughs> no, I could do. I could uh do. so you know it yeah, I, I'm so I'm so glad that that you have done this, and there are several Beyond Sushi uh, stores, restaurants yes. in New York yes. City. Can you talk a little bit about what inspired you to start Beyond Sushi? How did that come about? I have a I have kind of a Cinderella story that that started back in the catering company. We uh, we saw. We saw the excitement that we got in our uh, in our catering events where we were doing uh, uh, vegetarian sushi on our sushi station. I had nothing to do with this world, with veganism or veg being vegetarian. I was actually very ignorant about it, and uh, and I saw the reaction that people had when we were putting out uh, black rice sushi with what random vegetables that we had in our in our fridge, and um, the idea came to mind, and we decided to develop it. Uh, I was the chef at my dad's place. I I was very young, and I never had any chef over me uh, to tell me that certain things are okay or not okay. So I had the freedom to create anything that came up to my mind, and that was like uh, my crazy moment where I uh, just put everything that I could think of, or all the flavors that I had memories of, 
uh, put them together and create this concept. Uh, we created the concept and we tested it out in a vegetarian food festival in 2010, mm-hmm. the first time. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we sold out in like, uh, in like an hour. And wow. then the next year, we tripled the amount that we brought and we sold out again. Uh, so we figured, okay, we have, we're on to something and, and we should move ahead with it. Uh, and then beyond, so she came to be, it took a while. We created the menu. I was working full time. So it was kind of hard to do it at the same time. And then I peeled off the company and decided to open, do my own venture. Um, also cause I couldn't get along with my dad who's the owner of the catering company. Mm. Uh, that was, that was a nice drive to do that. Uh, but that, that's the story. Uh, You know, it's amazing how sometimes it's necessity that's the mother of invention, and sometimes it's just invention that's the mother of invention. You, it sounds like it, it is a Cinderella story, and yet at the same time, you were using the tools that you had at your at your you know at your command at your in your hands. When you talk about uh, oh, and it was born, and then we did this. You were also working full time. So yeah. what? What inspired you? What was the motivation to go, I'm going to work even harder and start my own place? Because I'm sure that working for yourself takes even more time and even more energy than working for someone else. So working, it it started, first of all, my father and and my family. I came to the U.S. for for the sole reason of, you know, being free and being able to do uh, anything I want to, and it's the land of the dreams and uh, the big dreams, and you uh, you can start and do anything you want. And I I really believed in it. And I, mm-hmm. I, as a kid, I used to come here. I came from a small town, maybe ten thousand people live in my town, uh, where I grew up. And and coming into the big city and seeing my dad in the restaurant business. He had six restaurants before the catering company. Mm-hmm. Seeing where he came from and uh, where he, he went to always inspired me and I thought that business will be my path but I also had the passion for cooking at the same time and when it married together in the catering company and having the platform like you said uh, in my dad's company uh, to do basically anything I wanted my dad left after a year that I was in uh, working for him he left to to live in Israel for a year and a half so he left me with a company that was pretty big and told me, okay, now you're running the company, you're the chef, you're just do everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I was 24 and I could do basically anything I wanted to. I could bust the company or I could work really hard and understand and learn along the way. And that's what I decided to do. And that gave me the, the tools to actually go ahead and, and start the first thing. I didn't know anything about it. Even when I started the, the first Beyond Sushi, I mm-hmm. was very, I was very young. I was 28. I didn't know much about business. I got uh, inspiration from here and uh, thoughts from here and thoughts from there. Uh, I just really worked hard. I really, no one really believed in, in what, because to say to anybody, oh, I'm going to make a vegetarian sushi or a vegan sushi. They told mm-hmm. me I'm crazy and I wouldn't last for, for more than six months. Uh, and I put all my savings on it. So I had $70,000 and I put everything into it and I loaned another 70 uh, and I was left with like a thousand dollars in the bank account when we first opened Beyond Sushi. And if Beyond Sushi didn't work for like a month, I would have been, you know, I would have been down $140,000. Wow. Uh, so it is a Cinderella story for me because everything that I had was put into it, but mm-hmm. I knew going into it that it's innovative enough. It's unique enough. And with my drive, I can make it work no matter what. And, to just lay it out, I was I was the I had one employee which is the, was the sushi chef and me. I used to come at three o'clock in the morning, make all the food, wash the dishes, go upstairs, be the counter person, finish the day, close up, and come back at three o'clock in the morning to do it all over again because I didn't have enough money to pay a third person to come come along and join us. Until of course everything you know moved along, um, but that's that. So. I'm fascinated. I, I <laughs> you, there's, no, seriously, because there, there is a, there's a drive and a willingness to work incredibly hard that, yeah. that comes, that shines through. And I think that's, that's incredible. And I'm, as, as someone who goes to Beyond Sushi whenever I can, I, I'm particularly grateful. But what, 
you you said when you were talking earlier that it was just oh we 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 put the vegetables we had on hand and yet yeah. it's become much more of a sort of a, a beacon if you will for for plant-based people to go and find really good gourmet like food in in you know on 37th street in manhattan or one of yeah. the other or one of the other uh stops that you have uh, a beyond yeah. sushi at how did that transform from oh i'm working my patootie off into here's this beautifully appointed i love the way the way you've created the restaurants the everything from the decorations to the menu everything is a delight for me so how did you evolve all of that what accounted for those innovations that made it a a real must stop for vegans who are either residents of new york or people who are visiting uh so it started with that 280 square feet on 14th street which was a hole in the wall uh 12 chairs and a counter but the idea was always for me i i i was the executive chef at a catering company we were doing uh events or weddings for 400 dollars a head or 500 dollars a head and i went from there to doing a 650 dollar roll of sushi which had an intensive amount of work into it uh but I always envisioned me having restaurants at the end. I, I used that because I didn't have enough money to open a restaurant. 37 mm -hmm. cost me a lot more than what the uh, first one cost me. But over time, uh, building building the model that I wanted uh, worked out. I started at 14th Street, then Chelsea Market, then 56th Street and 6th Avenue, uh, where we went into Midtown and started playing with the big boys over there and mm -hmm. got a lot more recognition, but you also have to elevate and, and bring up your A game because everything has to move through that fast. Everything has to uh, be precise, go out at a fast pace. You know, you're doing 200 covers at lunch. You cannot stop. You're just like going, 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 going. Um, and we had to bring our A game for that. Uh, and, but that allowed me, I made the decision to all along, even now, to take whatever Beyond Sushi gave me, I didn't look at it as mine. I looked at it as the business mm -hmm. and reinvest in that dream and expend it to as big as I can. I had a mission. I wanted to feed as many people as I can. Uh, and today, over 2 million people have dined at Beyond Sushi, which is a great achievement for me. And, it, you know, it makes me humbled by the, by, by the fact that all those meals are 100% vegan meals that people came to eat and enjoy them and coming back for it. And it's a, it became a mission for me. Uh, it became something more than just the business. Uh, so I try to expand it as much as possible. Uh, and, and that's what we did. And, and then the fourth location was 37. 37 was that big leap from going from a 700 square feet location to the biggest vegan, vegan restaurant in New York City. We had 3,000 square feet space, uh, 120 seats, and then elevating it along the way. Because when we started at 37, it was only the core menu of Beyond Sushi, which was the sushi rolls, the wraps, the salads, but it needed a lot more. We had the bar, we had, uh, we had the, the big space. So we expanded the menu and grew and grew and grew. And today we do all of that all over the locations. Um, and it became a restaurant. It became, uh, you know, with hot dishes and so on and so on. And delicious ones as well. Thank so, you. <laughs> well, I mean, really, I just, I, I tell everyone plan, I know. Of course. Oh, yeah. More plan. Yes. And, and I'll I want to tell you all about it. I would love to know. I, I would love yes. to also know uh, what. So, I love that it's obviously I'm vegan and I'm. Uh, always thrilled with more vegan restaurants and more vegan options out there for people. What brought around the innovation? Because it is an innovation, especially vegans are the fastest growing group as far as, you know, the way people are eating. What brought that up for you as something that you would focus on? How did you go from, as you said, you weren't vegan, you didn't, you didn't think yeah. about veganism when you, when you were younger. How did you innovate into that? What made that the leap that you were going to take? I wasn't, I wasn't kosher in black culture food before so it was it was already in a strict environment mm -hmm. uh, before and then when i um, it's not a secret anymore because i've said it a few a few times before but when we first opened the place was not vegan mm -hmm. it was uh it was vegetarian 
So mm-hmm. I had egg products. And three weeks into it, I changed it to uh, fully vegan, uh, which was one of the best business decisions that I made and personal decision because it influenced my life, my wife, my kids, uh, which are 100% vegan from birth. Um, but to begin with, uh, I, I knew that one, I want to create a product. I want to come into the market with something that no one has done before. Uh, mm-hmm. that no one, no one, I didn't want to make another donut. I didn't want to make another, uh, another sandwich. I wanted to make something that no one has done before. It's very risky, but the upside, if you do it right. And I knew that execution level and standards is like one of my guidelines of anything that I do. I was a drill sergeant in the army. Everything's got to be like, you know, uh, immaculate when it comes to, uh, to, to everything in life. But when it came to food, I was, I was very strict about it. Uh, I wanted to do something that would do like disrupt, do something that nobody done before. And mm-hmm. that's, where, that's where the innovation came into the sushi. I use it in, in all my foods. Uh, I use it in all my plates. It's usually something I remember. I hate just taking something and say, okay, let me serve a burger. That doesn't make any sense. Mm-hmm. I have a burger on my, on my menu right now. I uh, smoke it for six hours. It goes with a uh, nice feta cheese, arugula on top, uh, uh, a cipollone onion marmalade on top. So even if you do something else, and we're not talking about the sushi for a second, it's got to be something that unique for you. Uh, for me, Beyond Sushi, once you come to Beyond Sushi, I don't want you to be able to get what you got in my place anywhere else. Mm-hmm. You're going to remember me. You're going to remember Beyond Sushi. You're going to remember the flavors. You're going to remember the experience, hopefully for the good. Uh, and not for anything else. Uh, and that's, that, that was my, that was my motto because then people come back and people enjoy that and come back to you because they can't get it anywhere else. If I could get a, a piece of Satan anywhere, I'll get a piece of Satan anywhere. But if it's special and you put your touch on it and your creativity and your uniqueness on it, uh, people come back for it. And, and thank God that's what, that's what is carrying us now and what has carried me all along. I got, uh, a very high return rate of customers, uh, vegan and not vegan alike. So, which is great. It, it is great. And, you know, you mentioned the seitan, and I'm like, now I want your seitan skewers, which is my <laughs> other favorite dish. Uh, Thank you. So, so this idea of combining flavors, because that's one of the things I've noticed on your menu. And, and I promise we'll talk about other things besides For the sure. delicious food at some point. But but the, one of the things that I've noticed about the menu is that you combine flavors you would not normally think would be combinable, would be something yeah. that would work. And yet you do. So what's that process for you? you do you envision it first and go, oh, I'm going to combine this, this, this vegan feta with seitan, with arugula, with sun-dried tomatoes, or... Do you go, I know what would taste good. Let me let me try it. How does that process work for you? How do you make those creations? I for me, it's most of my dishes, uh, most of my dishes, um, maybe people will see it as uh, you know, maybe disrespectful or I don't know what, but most of my dishes I I don't even test them before I put them on the menu. Uh, I don't I don't I I don't taste them. I, 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 and it's not arrogant or anything like that. But the way I do it is, I have, uh, I remember flavors uh, very well. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you can say that even, but I remember, and I can tell uh, from from my memory what would create a balance in the flavors. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so what does that mean? For me, every every dish has to have a balance between the flavors that is that is palatable that you can you can it, you can taste all the flavors but they don't they don't hurt you they might poke they poke that I have a red line that I always imagine I want to poke that red line and tease it a little bit but not not break it so it's got to be balanced and it's got to be impactful and it's got to be memorable but those flavors are got to come together and create a certain balance so, for instance, if you do the spicy mang, there is a, a sweetness from the mango, but it cannot be sweet because then it's not as appealing. So we use a semi-ripe mango and not a fully ripe mango. 
And then you want to balance it out with a little bit of spiciness. And we get that from the toasted cayenne. And there's got to be some sort of fat. And fat is not a curse word. I know a lot of people are scared of it. But fat is, is a good cushion for any acidity or any, uh, any uh, saltiness. And it's, and, and it's got to be there to create flavor. So we use uh, the fat in the sauce to mellow out everything and just smooth the, the flavors. Uh, and it goes along with all the dishes. Sushi was very appealing for me. It's, it was because uh, it was a perfect package. I, was, I, I told you I was a drill sergeant. So for me, that bite was the same bite. So you have that perfect package. I can get the same amount of sauce, the same amount of mango, the same amount of cucumber, avocado, rice in there. So it's a perfect package. It's more of a vessel, not sushi per se, like Japanese sushi. It was a perfect vessel that you get a nice bite that has all those mixtures of flavors and you can orchestrate whatever you want into it uh, and get a, a perfect bite. And that, that, it sounds, and it's repetitive. It sounds boring, but it's something that we crave. We crave that consistency all the time. And that was the perfect vessel for me to create that. Uh, and that's why I chose sushi. I think that's wonderful. And and it is whenever I have either the mushroom or to me, the sunny side, which is my my go to when I come to Beyond Sushi, that there feels like there has been it's almost like a, a like a painting, you know, like a composition. There are all of these different flavors that you might not even think would go well together. But yeah. when you taste that sweet potato in with the avocado and the sun-dried tomato, all of a sudden, ah, there's all this, there's a, there's a come, it's almost a gestalt of, of things being, uh, of the, of the entire thing tasting better than any of the ingredients might taste by themselves, if that makes sense. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So there, there's That's something. Perfect. Thank you. Oh, uh, no, no, no. It's, it's my pleasure, but I'm wondering and about. Hopefully it's the same every time that you come. That's, yeah, that's and it has been so far. I love it. I, I get it every, you yes. know, the seitan skewers, the spanakopita when you have it, and, and the uh, sunny side are my, are my go-tos. And also the cauliflower. Oh, it's hot and spicy, but I love it. So, it's yes, <laughs> yeah. very, it's very, it's delicious. So, so the psychology behind that, the, the psychology behind the balance of it, what, what role do you think that kind of balance plays in, in the life of somebody sitting down to eat a meal at, at Beyond Sushi? What do you think what, that, that does? Um, I, think that, I think that it I, I would like to create a memory. That's what I'm trying to do. I would mm -hmm. like to create a memory of the flavor and not a not a uh, intrusive memory, but like a, a good, a good smooth memory that you come and you know that you're going to get that, that, that memory again. And, and that will be there all the time, but you can come for it and it's not going to change for you. It's not going to surprise you. It's still going to be that great, right? It's going to surprise you the first time, but you can get surprised every time you come for that memory. Uh, and for me, food is memory. And I, I, I create those things first for myself. That's how I see it. Mm -hmm. okay? I create, I got to like it. I'm never going to put something that I don't like on the menu. Or I'm not 100% like in love with it and can eat it myself. Uh, and I, I am a, I'm a big eater. <laughs> and I have been <laughs> since I was a little, since I was a little boy. Uh, and, and if for me, it, it worked all along and all those years and all, all my experience uh, showed me that, that psychology does work and it brings back people. Uh, and like I said, the, the, more I, the more people I can feed, the, uh, the, the happier I am. Forget about the business part of things. Uh, it's just, uh, it's a satisfying, uh, you know, it's a satisfying feeling because you're actually fulfilling uh, my, my goal. Uh, that's my goal at the end of the day. My, my mother is like that. If you walk into her house, she's got a six course meal waiting for you within five minutes. So <laughs> nice. Yeah. It, she's, you know, is she Moroccan? <laughs> no, no, uh, she's from Moldova. If you know where okay. that is. So yes, I do. Yeah, yeah, so that's that's where I was born too, and and uh, oh, that we got eat Faruski, at least 
Uh, so if you didn't understand what we were saying, we were saying how, oh, we, we both speak Russian. There you go. A little bit. A little bit probably. <laughs> you probably speak it better than I do. I've been in the USA a long time. So, yes. uh, so okay. So we're, I see walking into a Beyond Sushi that there's a definite love of food and a definite love of serving people food, mm -hmm. sort of getting getting that into it. But you've also, as we've mentioned, innovated. And yeah. I'd love to get your your take on what do you think it takes for people to innovate? Like, what is the impetus for someone to do something completely different or really unusual in the way normal things like food would be done? What do you think it takes for someone to do that? I, th I think that the main thing that I have learned over the years is uh, to listen. I listen uh, from the first day that I opened. I had a, I had a good idea and, uh, and I wasn't afraid to go with it and I wasn't afraid to put it out there. But what I did is I listened and I listened mostly to my customers, right? So I was, uh, I was addicted to Yelp. Yelp was the biggest thing back then. Mm -hmm. And everything that anybody wrote about my business or said, I would, I would, I would drive people crazy asking them about everything that they tried and everything that they that they think. And I listened. Uh, I I transferred to a fully vegan restaurant because I listened to my customers and I listened to what they're what they're asking for. Uh, and I could do it because it was only egg products. And I and I listened to my customers when they said that something wasn't a hundred percent. It wasn't as tasty as they thought it would. Or maybe it was a little bit salty, and maybe I didn't get upset about it, uh, even though I'm a chef. But you gotta have no ego and listen, and know how to change and evolve in a split second, uh, and not, you know, make decisions and live with them and make the right decisions when when they come along. Uh, corona made me change the, my menu. Uh, the, the 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 opening of 37 made me change my menu, made me change my business, made made, made me change the model. Today I'm opening something new and we'll talk about it in a second, but that made me change my model because I'm listening to my customers. I'm listening to the future. I'm trying to think, okay, what's the next shtick that I need to do to make my business better or continue innovating. And it all comes from creation. I want to always create. I want to always make more or create more or, um, you know, I dream about food every night. So <laughs> it's just, <laughs> It drives me, you know, and it drives me uh, a little cuckoo. But uh, <laughs> but it's it's something that I, I, over the years I I, I put it out there. I want to hear feedback, and I know that a lot of people uh, put something out there, and a lot of times don't they think it's good? They don't want to hear that it's bad, and they shut their ears. And I would recommend to just open your ears and listen to everybody around you. Listening doesn't mean that. You do what they tell you. Listening means that you're listening to their advice and making your own decisions. You have to be able to make your own decisions on what you're going to do afterwards. And that keeps creating more. And you're always going to create more because that will inspire you. Okay, I need to change this. I need to inspire this. I need to, you know, and move along. I love that you said that, that, that idea of listen and then still make that informed decision but you're the one who makes the decision and yes. yet yet something that you said kind of sticks with me you said you can't have an ego about it so how if, if somebody came to you and said okay chef guy I would like to do that how would you recommend someone go about trying to remove their ego from those kinds of interactions so that they're more free and open to advice or or reviews or something like that uh i developed uh i mean personally as guy i i i don't get offended by anything that anyone says or i, I it's hard to say i don't care because i i listen to people uh but i don't get offended so if somebody says hey i hated your your cauliflower okay that's fine uh, but if three people said that, then then I need to listen, you know. Mm. So my ego's gotta gotta be shut off. Someone can dislike a dish, and one day I don't know what whatever uh, didn't work for him. But I need to listen to what what 
what the what the pattern is. You always want to work around patterns. And if your pattern works, like I, I created a pattern of, of balance on my food that would draw people in and keep them coming for it, I got to go with that pattern. Uh, but if I create something that is, is not good and, 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 and drives people away, I got to look at that pattern, look at myself and be honest with myself on certain things, whether I like it or not. I did a tasting, for instance, now, like not too long ago, and I have no, you know, I have no problem admitting it. It wasn't my best. I was, my head is uh, with the business, Corona, this, that, that, that. But I came to the client and I said, hey, client, uh, I apologize. I would like to, after we're done with this, to reschedule. And we did another tasting and everything went well, but I knew to judge myself on my, on my, on my standing. Uh, so you gotta, you gotta be open. You gotta be, you gotta hear yourself and you gotta be able to, to say, okay, I, I'm not the best at certain situation. I can't be the best all the time. I'm going to strive to do that. And I'm going to listen to everybody that is around me to get better at what I do. And I do that all the time. I get like emails, bad emails about this or about that. You feed so many people. It's you bound to have something that goes wrong. Uh, if every time somebody sent me an email and said, Hey, this waiter treated me like that. And I said, no way, this is my waiter and he's the best and whatever or not. I wouldn't see the problem. I wouldn't hear about the problems. So I personally take all those emails, respond to the customers, listen to them, invite them back in, meet them, uh, make their experience better, uh, but making my business better and making my actions better than anything that I do. I think it's it's a win-win for me. It it sounds like it, and it also sounds like you're pretty self-aware. You have to be in order to be able to go, okay, that didn't go as well as it could have. Let me do something about it. So there's a there's a willingness to act that I'm sensing about what you're about the way you're running things. But there's also that sense of awareness and self-awareness. And do you do anything to to help you be more self-aware as far as being radically honest with yourself about what's going on do you have a practice about it do you meditate what what, what do you How do i do it uh i i uh i i do a lot of uh i do a lot of me time where i take my time to listen to uh to learn and think uh and think not only about the business uh but think about everything that i do and why i'm doing it because that that's what that's what moves you. It can't be just the business. This business is hard. Like I can't even tell you. It's hard. You know, it's it's like the hardest thing in the world. Uh, I am not only the chef. I'm also the CFO of the company. I uh, I run the operations. I innovate. I am now in construction because I'm building a new restaurant that we'll talk about. But I'm all like full with dirt and everything else. It's a hard business. And if you don't know how to do multiple things at the same time, it's very, very hard to succeed in this business. So I take the time to, one, teach myself the things that I need to know uh, about this business to move forward from other people and, and just by thinking. And I take time to think and calm down and think about what the business, what's the next step for the business or what's the next step for us as a company uh, to grow and still be competitive in this hard, hard, crazy market right now and, and, and keep creating, you know, and keep, and keep coming up with new things and be competitive because it's not, it's not easy. We're all competing now on a smaller amount of people that are out and dining, you know? Absolutely. And, and, and the fact that you are growing in this time is, is definitely it says something about yeah, about not, your business model it's amazing uh it says that i'm uh I, kind of, I mean i don't want to say the word but it's it's something that i i believe that a business that does not grow is bound to die mm. that's that's my that's my you cannot be static there is nothing it's either up or down for me and mm-hmm. uh, as a business owner you are not growing then you're you're done. You have to grow. And also on a personal level, you have to grow to, to, and if you don't, what's the point? You know what I'm saying? Sure. What's the point of, 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 of being right. Uh, you want to, you want to grow, you want to do, you want to, you want to do as much as you can. And I think that taking more responsibility or, or growing 
creates more meaning to what you do at the end of the day. Absolutely. And so that brings me to the next question. We, you've touched on it a little bit about what's beyond Beyond Sushi. What, what, uh, what is it that you're working on that's the new thing, the, the construction, the expansion? What, yeah. what is this new project? So uh, in Beyond Sushi, I had seven locations uh, when Corona hit, and I had to close two of them because mm. uh, they were in, uh, in, in like markets. Mm. And they were smaller, but they were in the markets and they were there for a long time. I closed my Chelsea market uh, location after six, seven years of operations over there. Uh, and that was a, uh, that wasn't nice, but it is what it is. Uh, and instead of that, I'm going to open a new restaurant, uh, which is not beyond CG. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's going to be uh, named Willow, W-I-L-L-O-W. Uh, over the years, I've learned a lot from my customers and tying back to listening to my customers. Um, I've been tied to the sushi for a long time and I, and I love Beyond Sushi and I'm going to continue Beyond Sushi. Uh, but I wanted to take all my knowledge and all my, my, my learning from all those years and put it into uh, a place where I think uh, the future and the demand is right now. Uh, and we are going to open uh, a vegan bistro where you'll have more of your relatable food that, you, that you, you're accustomed to hear about. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to put my twist and guys twist on it and make it something that you've never even imagined uh, that vegan food could be like before. And that's, that's what we're doing. Uh, and I went with it and it's going to be, a uh, there's sandwiches and entrees that are out of this world and you get this fried chicken sandwich and you got, uh, a pastrami that I make and I smoke beer and cherry wood and all these cool things that I'm getting, I'm getting hungry. <laughs> but, <laughs> I, oh, yeah, I'm starving but, at this point. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but really, really, really nice things, a nice bar. Um, mm. and, and, and it's all, it's all possible to to do for takeout, uh, but I'm banking and I, I think that uh, New York is not something that will die down and New York is not, uh, is not a place that restaurants won't survive in. And I think that it's gonna take time, but we'll work hard and we'll make a, we'll make a new thing and uh, with the support of everybody and, and this city is gonna come back to what it was and I want to be there strong standing. And that's what I'm doing. I haven't stopped working since this whole thing started between feeding uh, uh, doctors and nurses and uh, uh, support and feed and all this stuff and running the restaurants. And we have five Beyond Sushi's operating right now. The new one on the Upper East Side, 5637 uh, Mulberry Street, 14th Street. And am I missing one? No, that's it, five. And then five. Willow is going to open on 199 8th Avenue between 20th and 21st, and you're getting the exclusive nobody knows about. It. Wow. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So that's that's my that's my first one. Uh, that's that, that's that's going to be Willow, and it's going to be a, a standalone uh, from Beyond Sushi. Uh, it's not going to have sushi in it, so expect all that all that creative and innovation to go into all those dishes. And I am going to give a fight to all the other uh, vegan restaurants that, <laughs> that are out there. Uh, <laughs> wow. And, and, that's, and that's, that's, that has been brewing and, and boiling for a long time. And, you know, I've done Beyond Sushi for eight years. I'm going to continue doing it, innovate it. And, but we're going to do uh, another thing along with it, you know. Are you cloning yourself? Is that what's going to happen? How, how are no. you, <laughs> how are you going to do all of this? That's incredible. Um, Yes, yes. I actually, I actually, I wish that, you know, Corona, Corona slapped me really hard that we had, uh, I had 125 employees. I had to lose close to a hundred employees. Wow. Uh, yeah. It's really sad and it's, and, it, and it's, it slapped us right, you know, very hard, but they're working really hard to survive and stay in this. But like I said, I, I cannot, I cannot sit on my hands and expect things to get better. You okay. got to keep doing stuff and you got to keep innovating. You got to keep creating. Uh, and I know the tide will turn around. It's just a matter of time. 
Uh, and it's not about even being hopeful. It's about just, you know, you, you can't just sit. You, right. you got to continue. You do it safely, of course. I'm doing everything safely. Uh, but and thank God, zero cases since we reopened and we've been open with five locations and everything is good. Um, but we got to continue. We got to we got to keep doing it. And we got to do it safely, but we got to continue and do it. Because if not, uh, then we're not, you know. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and, you know, the, what you say about growing and creating is so it's so it strikes me so hard because there is a temptation to to go, oh, no, we're just going to sit down with a good book for a really long time. And it, that has its place, you know, like you were saying earlier about taking that time to think and to ruminate. But there's definitely yeah. this is an opportunity for for many people to to figure out how things can be done differently oh yeah and and strike out in in a new direction and and so i'm i'm excited to yeah. i will be at willow as soon as as soon as it opens <laughs> i probably going to have to check it out and, in the middle of january that's that's the goal so oh that's it's wonderful not, it's not that far away yeah yeah i just yeah. signed for it but i uh but we're we're moving along really fast and i you know i'm there with the construction and everything else so uh, so we're moving fast and on top of that, since the whole pandemic has happened, we're working on another project uh, and we are going to uh, make our uh, Jax, Jax is the name of the brand of the new, of the new, uh, new venture besides Willow, which is, uh, it's, uh, it's a tuna salad product that we're making in-house made from jackfruit, really mm. good stuff that mm -hmm. you'll be able to purchase direct to consumer and in, uh, in stores and so on, but it's still in the early stages. And one of the things that I told you that I like to hear what people think about it, uh, we send it out, we're gonna send it out next month to uh, probably like 150 people just to get feedback, packaging and so on, blah, 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 blah. And then we can work it out, but that will be part of a line of products that we hope to launch in the future. So if and when a pandemic and when uh, our governors mayors and whatever decide to shut us down then we have something to uh keep us afloat you know because the restaurants uh the the supermarkets have worked really well in this pandemic uh we have got hit so badly that i can't even explain so we're going to come out with this product as well so there's two things going on at the same time wow well and and of course the the the, the whole restaurants the whole beyond sushi oh, yeah. so that's the and third that, thing. and that's yeah that's yeah <laughs> the and there's stuff Right. So, no, but it's, it's, what's interesting to me is this idea of, of doing a model that will cover both, you know, there's the, the restaurant model where people come in, but there's also this idea of, well, let's make some of the things that we do available at stores. And that way yeah. it can be a, a, a revenue stream as well as feeding uh -huh. more people vegan food, which I'm always happy to get behind, but, but that, well, that idea. Tuna salad is a killer. That tuna yeah. Salad is like, <laughs> I, did I, did I, I see you, you post it. about it? No, I haven't tried it. I haven't. I had, the last time I was at Beyond Sushi was like a no, it was nice. a, a week and a half Saturday ago. I did not get like it though. Wakame dust in, inside, and it gives it like a nice uh, ocean flavor, and it's really, it's really subtle but really nice. Uh, I've been eating it like yeah. So it's it's a it's a good it's a good it's a good start. But I wanna I wanna get into the direct to consumer because again this. You gotta be pandemic proof. Right. And one thing that I learned from this is, as a business, we got to. I can't lose a hundred people like that. It's not. You know, it took me. Each person that you hire is an investment, and it's part of the family, and and you can't. It's just. It was so hard. The whole thing. You know? I'm sure. So, I'm. So yeah. Hopefully that doesn't happen in the future, and we don't have to do anything like that, and we can keep everybody along. But the core team is still here. And uh, when we are allowed, hopefully everybody comes back. That would be lovely. And and yet, yeah. let me let me ask you: within this direct to consumer product line that you're talking about, if and obviously, hopefully not, we never have another one of these pandemics again once this one is yeah. over. Will your people, how, how will you do this? Will your people be trained to switch over? Like, oh, I know you've been working at the restaurants, but instead of the restaurants, because yeah, you we're- you come into, because we have a, we have a, we have a, it's big enough to be called like a, 
we have a commissary test kitchen in Long Island City mm. uh, that has 7,000 square feet. Mm. Uh, and here I, I do all my production and everything else. Uh, and my corporate offices and everything like that. Hopefully, if the product is big enough, then we can switch. Uh, not If not everybody, but some of the people back in here into packaging and so on and so on and so on. Mm-hmm. And it all, and all depends on who and how long if they're seasonal workers, full-time workers. Unfortunately, I had to get, I had to uh, lose, uh, you know, full-time workers, uh, managers, people mm-hmm. that that I I would I would never ever think about that. But uh, financially, if I did, we would have been shut down by now if I kept everybody on board. Right. Uh, we wouldn't be in business, and it doesn't make any sense if if you go out of business and you can never rehire back. That's 125 jobs that are lost forever, right. you know? So at least now we're, we're going to hopefully float. It doesn't mean anything. We're still losing money every month, unfortunately. Uh, it's what it is. Uh, but hopefully things will change. And, and that's what I'm banking on. And everybody is, all the restaurants that you see out there, even though you'll see some of them full and some of them have people and stuff, the overhead expenses in a restaurant, you have like a 10% margin of profit when mm-hmm. you're fully loaded and you're like all the time working 10 15 20 if you're if you're a king 25 if you're like i don't know like the best at the business right so when your revenue stream is cut by 75 percent you're like you're floating in in in, in very dangerous waters you know? yeah yeah uh so so i've been able to uh, very aggressively go at my to my landlords to uh, my vendors to everybody around me uh, and be able to to work things out uh, and I've been able to uh, shift my my production everything that I do my menus so I can adjust according to this since I'm not like this big corporate company and there's a lot of decisions to be made I made the decisions on this, 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 and this, and that's what we're doing. And uh, we live and die with it. And hope now we lived with it, which is good. But you know, I could have made bad decisions, but I make good decisions. And thank God we're still here. A lot of a lot of restaurants and people that I know personally, I'm part of this like owners group. Are you know they were they were hurting and they're hurting, and a lot of them closed. Unfortunately, and it's sad. You know? It it is. it is it is it is incredibly sad when you when you see restaurants struggling yeah. and and so many closing and and I'm and yet I'm so happy that you are working as hard as you are I mean again selfishly because I love I love coming to <laughs> Beyond Sushi uh, huh? I, you know it's I, I'm not you know there there is no money changing hands here folks I just really do love the food <laughs> but cool. but yeah there's there's something. To me, this idea of I'm going to keep pushing, I'm going to keep trying new things, and I'm going to keep really, you know, pu- pushing the limits, pushing the boundaries of of what I can envision. The, that's yeah. the feeling I'm getting from you and what you do. And I appreciate that so much because, again, the temptation to go, well, I'm just going to give up, no, you know, for some people no, would be um, strong. You know? and, yeah, no, you, know, you can cut a up in a bowl and cry about it. I, I, I had three days that I was pulling the hair out of my head, mm. don't get me wrong. But that happened like early March when right. I saw the decline. Right. Uh, but then I realized, and look, it's, it's, it's been almost 10 years and I've been building this and you see all of it like in front of your eyes, like what the hell is going on? And it's all like crumbling down basically. Mm. Uh, and and you, you can't do anything about it. It's forced on you, you know? I was never, I was never in my life in that situation when somebody can force me to close or because Beyond Sushi and my, my staff knows that we don't close unless there is three foot of snow and not Christmas day, not, we never close. We are open. Mm -hmm. We're always there. You can always count on us. It's open except for our, uh, our yearly uh, party for my staff. And if there is uh, like four feet of snow, we're open uh, and we'll, we'll be there. But, you know, when when you're forced to do that, 
and I understand why. I completely understand why. Right? Sure. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but when you're forced to do that, that 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 just you know drives you crazy. But I can't just. What am I going to do? Tell my kids what? You know, or tell my employees what? You know, I still have a core of thirty people here that have been by my side for eight years. Mm-hmm. What am I going to tell them? I can't pay you anymore. You go. You go. Go for. You know. Uh, so I got to figure out a way. Got to do it. They're my responsibility too. I, yeah. I don't see just the business. It's like we're, they're like my family, you know? And in the first days, I frankly, not, not to, uh, uh, to brag or anything, but all my staff came to the main kitchen and I just like gave out food to everybody because there's nothing to do with it here, guys. Take it home, take it this, take it that, take it that. Because we didn't know what's going to happen in the beginning. It was scary. Right. That's the truth. Uh, so, but that's what it is. But now we don't worry about the past. We're looking forward onwards. And that's what I tell my staff now. It's going to be some days are, are crappy and we don't have a lot of business and some days are better. Uh, but we got to look forward, keep our hand on the pulse, try not to waste, make sure that we do the best service that we can to the people that support us because they are like the most important thing in the world right now. Um, and, and that's it. And onwards, you know? Absolutely. And that, you know, that, that attitude is so wonderful for me to hear that, that, that you're looking forward that, as, as I said, you're expanding, you're looking into the future. So what is the future outside of Willow yep. and this, this, and Jack, what, what is your ultimate vision? What is it that you want to leave us with? To achieve? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I believe that um, personally, uh, I don't. I don't want to be McDonald's, right? I don't want to be uh, all over the U.S. or anything like that. I want to have a nice uh, amount of restaurants, and I would expand my my reaches to as far as I as far as I can. One of the reasons that I didn't go with uh with the shark tank deal and laurie grenier and Matt, matthew higgins or not Higgins, uh is um that the vision of the of, of beyond sushi was about to change the vision of it the, the 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 as you grow you have to you have to release and let go of certain things in a business uh and i would not I, I couldn't release standards and quality uh, even by a percent. For me, it was it was a no no, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and I want to grow, but and I see a way of doing it and keeping the same standards and the same uh, and the same uh, quality and the same uniqueness and creativity onwards and forward in the future. To a certain point, at some point it's 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 just undoable Mm -hmm. but i'm not willing to do that and it's not for me and i I, i'm not trying to be a billionaire from this it's my calling it's it's what i it's my passion it's what i love to do uh it's i want to get to as many people as i can that's my passion uh feed as many people as i can i don't want to be per se and sell uh food for nine hundred dollars i don't want to be a fast food but I want to be at a place where people are comfortable to come casually to my restaurant, enjoy a meal, uh, any of my restaurants, and hopefully many more, uh, and make an impact. Make an impact, not just to stand alone. Make an impact. Feed 1,500 people a day, 2,000 people a day, and half of them are not even vegan. Great. That's a great impact. That's that's something that I can I can walk around with pride that I that I do for myself. You know, uh, and then yeah, it's a business. Uh, uh, we're a family. I have I have employees. They they have families probably feeding I don't know what 100 families from or 125 families from this business right before Corona, um, and that's that's that gives me great satisfaction as well. Uh, and that's why I came to this country. You know, I uh, I enjoy the freedom. I enjoy uh, I enjoy what 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 I was given, and I and I respect it. And, you know. That's that's what it is. I love it. And, you know, it's interesting listening to you uh, talk about vegans and non-vegans alike. The last time I was at your place was a week ago, Saturday. 
And uh, I, I brought two non-vegans and my friend Steve said, you know, if all vegan food tasted like this, I'd eat nice. more vegan food. So, <laughs> so I thought nice. that was, I thought that was nice. great. So it ties in very well with what you were saying. Let me put, it, let me play some anyway. You know? <laughs> I, I, I would if I could. It's just not gonna taste the same after yeah. the twentieth. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, it, it. I and 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 he is a hardcore non-vegan. So it was really, okay. it was great to to have okay. him there and and uh, and have him sample the the delicious the food. Best yes. Compliment. It's the one. It, it was great. I, I was like, yep. yay, victory. So uh, so I I am really grateful that you've taken the time to well, thank you for having to, me. It was this. it was my pleasure. I thank you. I, I want to make sure that we have uh, the social media so people can find you. I know that you have five uh, five shop fronts and there's also you're on Instagram and Facebook and LinkedIn. Yeah. Is there any other place that people could look for? Because I'm going to put all of that in the show notes, Beyond Sushi. Yeah. Uh, so Instagram yeah. is our biggest one. Okay. Instagram, Beyond Sushi NYC, uh -huh. uh, at Beyond Sushi NYC, or mine, Chef Guy Vagnin, uh, is also a big one, even though uh, I decided for the last two months not to go on it because I got addicted to it. Uh, uh, yes. So, uh, yeah, but I have somebody who's helping me with it for now. But I'll go back on it when we do Willow. Uh, and then uh, Willow is going to have a handle, but Beyond Sushi NYC and Chef Guy Vakanin, you can get all the updates, everything over there, all the new dishes, all the specials, uh, all the scoops about the new places, Jack's, and so on. And BeyondSushi.com, uh, which would be, uh, you know, the main uh, the website where everything is listed. Uh, you can order from the website. We have an app. Uh, you can order to go. We use our app to give 10% to the customers that order from us 10% off instead of giving it to Grubhub and Seamless. So please come on our app. Uh, we would appreciate that. We'll give it back to you. And um, that's it. Okay. Ah. Awesome. I'll put I'll be sure to put the link to the app on the show notes page also. Well, I guy, I'm it. I'm so grateful. Again, this is what a wonderful conversation and I feel like I can I can get even more people to come to Beyond Sushi, which is one of my Thank goals you. in life. Uh, I I have a question that I ask everybody who comes on the show. Sure. Uh, that I would like to ask you. It's a silly question, but I find that sometimes it gives really uh, provocative and, and poignant answers. And the question is this, as, as our last question before we sign off, and that is, if you had an, a plane that could skywrite anything for the whole world to see, what would you say? Take responsibility. I love it. That is phenomenal. Okay. What a great answer. That's good. All right. Well, okay. Guy, thank you so much. I am really grateful again that you took the time to be here. I hope that you've enjoyed the Innovative Mindset podcast. My name is Isolde Trachtenberg. I have been here with Chef Guy Vaknin of Beyond Sushi and the forthcoming Willow as well. If you have questions about what you heard, if you want to know more about Beyond Sushi, follow Beyond Sushi on all the various social media channels. You're going to be thrilled to pieces with the food. You're going to get inspired by the, the way flavors and ideas can come together. Thank you again so much. If you have questions for me, I'm delighted to answer them. And until next time, I say to you, remember to listen, learn, laugh, and love a whole lot. <music>Thanks so much for joining me today. I really appreciate you being here. Today's episode was produced by Zolda Trachtenberg and is copyright 2020. As always, please remember this is for educational and entertainment purposes only. Past performance does not guarantee future results, although we can always hope. Until next time, this is Zolda Trachtenberg and I send you all of my love.